We welcome all of you here tonight. There may be friends, there are family with us tonight. We recognize you, we see you, we welcome you in. Thank you for joining us this evening. Please join me in our call to worship. Words taken from Isaiah chapter 9, found in your bulletin. Let us read responsibly and with joy these words. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And then he will be called a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let us stand to sing our opening hymn of praise, O Come, All Ye Faithful, is hymn number 193, hymn 193. Let us stand to sing all the verses.
The Lord is here and he greets you with these words, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From God our Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ, and through the working of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now that we have been greeted by our great God, turn to the great people around you this evening. Find out who's here. Greet each other in the name of Jesus. Life when this world is not all that it's cracked up to be. 
the Apostle Paul wrote, that we rejoice in our sufferings. For suffering produces character, and character, perseverance, and perseverance, hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Last week we lit the candle of joy. That's the pink one. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Even in the midst of the struggling and tragedies of this world, we may have joy because His Spirit lives in us even today. And this morning, we lit the candle of peace. Oh, how this world needs peace. Amen? <coughs> Wars, factions, fighting, division. And Jesus comes. He is our peace. The announcement of the angels to the shepherds. Peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Peace between we and our God. Peace in your hearts. May that peace live forever, even as we await now the second coming, the return of Jesus Christ. This time we're so blessed to have one of our own, Amanda Sandler, is going to lead us in a ministry of song and sing for us one of our favorites, Old Holy Night.
so much, Amanda. Excellent. Well done. What a beautiful song, especially at Christmas Eve. Please join me for our prayer of adoration and confession. It is printed in the bulletin. As we come into the presence of this holy God on this holy night, may we confess our sins before him. Let us use this prayer to do so. Let us pray. O oh God, whose light penetrates the darkness of our lives, we confess that we have all too often walked in darkness, that we have failed to see the light of Christ at Christmas and through the entire year. We have been so busy preparing for Christmas that we have neglected to prepare for Christ. We have been so preoccupied with glitter and tinsel that we have forgotten about a lowly manger in a Bethlehem stable and the baby that was born there so long ago. Forgive us, Father. Help us to see and recognize the one true light of Christmas among all the many lights. Help us to see the light of Christ which lights our way and illumines our path to new life. Help us to shine this light in the world around us that we may shine your peace and love to people still living in darkness. Amen. The Bible tells us that if we confess our sins before our God, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. Amen. Let us stand to sing our hymn of assurance and preparation, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 178. We will stand to sing all the verses, 178.
Dan, for your accompaniment tonight. How beautiful to hear the piano. You play it so well. Thank you so much. And thank those who are serving on Tech Row tonight. Chuck and Pam Anderson, I mean sound and camera, and Amanda Sadler, I mean camera as well. Thank you so much for all of our volunteers. It's what makes Grace Church the goal. Amen? Amen. Tonight's scripture lesson is from Luke chapter 2. But not exactly the Christmas story that we've come to here. We've read that in, in recent weeks. But it is actually eight days after Christmas. Looking ahead now, Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 40. In my Bible, the section is entitled, Jesus Presented in the Temple. Hear the word of God. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. The name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. The grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our Lord remains forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. O oh God, come now and speak to us. Use this message. Use this moment. Use us all to accomplish your will. Anoint us and speak to us tonight on this most holy night, this night divine. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Visit us by your spirit, we pray, in your holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you've not been with us lately here at Grace Church, for the last several weeks now, we have been on a kind of journey, a kind of spiritual journey, back to Bethlehem. 
Since December 3, we have been taking a trip all the way back to Bethlehem. We have been eager to see and to greet and to meet Jesus the Christ. Maybe you are too. But it has not been easy finding the way. We have no Google Maps or Garmin or GPS to guide us to Bethlehem. But thankfully, God has provided some messengers along the way. Some people who can show us the way. We discovered a few weeks ago that the prophets of old have shown us the way to Bethlehem. They have pointed to the city, to Bethlehem, to the circumstances surrounding Christ, and also to the Christ child himself. We have also discovered a couple weeks ago that the shepherds show us the way with the help of the angel messengers announcing good news and hope for the poor, the lowly, and the outcast. That includes you and me. Mary and Joseph have shown us the way, reminding us that God's purposes prevail in history and hardship and in humanity. And we learned this morning that the wise men show us the way to Bethlehem as they humbled themselves, as they hurried to meet the Christ child, and as they honored him with their worship and gifts. But tonight, tonight on this Christmas Eve, none other than Jesus himself shows us the way to Bethlehem. That's right, Jesus, even in his birth and also his life and ministry, show us the way. In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, he said. I mean, if anyone can point us to Bethlehem, it would be Jesus, right? The prophets spoke from of old as they were led by the Spirit. The shepherds were the first to receive the birth announcement from the angels. Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem for a Roman census. The wise men followed a star in search of the boy Jesus. But now, in these last days, God has spoken and shown us the way by his own Son. Hebrews 1 tells us, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets, and at many times and in various ways, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom he has made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. He was superior to the angels. To which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son? No. The word says, let all angels worship him. So tonight we consider the most definitive, <laughs> most authoritative GPS ever, not a global positioning system, but a God positioning system through Jesus himself. Jesus shows us the way, as the Christmas carol says that we've just sung, O little town of Bethlehem, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And I want to invite you to come to Bethlehem tonight and discover Jesus for yourself. Tonight is a night of recommitment, of rededication, of discovering Jesus anew and laying your heart before him. <coughs> Consider with me a unique Christmas passage, the one I just read from Luke chapter 2. Jesus is presented by his parents for circumcision in the temple. It is eight days now after Jesus was born in the stable. The initial commotion surrounding the first Christmas was now past. Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem for Caesar's decree. Jesus was born quietly in a stable and placed in a manger. The angels announced the birth to the shepherds, who by this time had all gone back to their fields and flocks. The wise men would not arrive until a year or two later. The initial excitement of the newborn child is worn off much like it will be for us in another few days. It is now time to sort of get on with life, adjusting to a new baby in the home. I imagine Mary nursing the child, sleepless nights of Jesus, 
crying, changing diapers, singing lullabies, visits from old family and friends in Bethlehem, and Joseph looking for a more permanent place to, to raise the child. Life would move on now forward and carry on in pretty normal ways. Aside from the lives of Mary and Joseph, with the exception of an angelic message to the shepherds, things were pretty much back to routine by now. Just eight days after the birth of Jesus, and truth be told, at this point, the birth of Jesus hadn't really changed all that much. Jesus was born in the outskirts of Jerusalem, a sleepy little town. His birth was not noticed or a big deal to most people. In fact, the vast majority of folks didn't even realize that Jesus, a Savior, had been born. Their lives went on pretty much as normal, without change. And it makes me wonder if the same thing is happening today. Yeah, we'll celebrate Christmas. We'll sing the carols. We'll light the candles. We do this every year. But a few days from now, what will change? Will we? Jesus the Savior is born, but the world is largely oblivious. Except for a few, our lives will carry on pretty much as normal. Just another baby, maybe. Like the angels in the stable, we have no idea who lies in our midst. We haven't a clue that we are in the presence of royalty. We're often so focused on our own lives, our own problems, on doing the next thing, making it through the Christmas party, preparing the food, opening the presents, getting along with family. Our lives are consumed with the mundane, the routine, just surviving the holidays, the customs, getting through the week. Or maybe we have been through so many Christmases now that it's no big deal anymore. Christmas, just another holiday. Jesus is born. Bah humble. So what? We know the story. We sing the carols, light the candles, eat the meal, and Take a nap. So many people, they miss it. The Savior of the world is born. The angels announce peace on earth and goodwill to men, to all people. We've turned Christmas into Santa Claus and cookies and Christmas trees and decorations and light shows. And the question I ask of you are you missing the Christ in Christmas? In today's world, it's so easy to miss Jesus. We're so busy with all of our stuff. So let's not let that happen. Jesus is the reason for the season, right? But there were someone there was someone, actually two people, who did not miss Jesus. Luke 2 tells us in the passage that I read on the eighth day, time to circumcise him. He was named Jesus. The name of the angel had given him before he was, he was conceived. And now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. A light to the Gentiles. Glory for Israel. Simeon recognized Jesus for who he was. Salvation. A light for the Gentiles. Glory. Simeon blessed them. And he said to Mary, his, his mother, he said, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel.
Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken again so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And the prophetess Anna also recognized Jesus for who he was. She was a widow woman, 84 years old, never left the temple, worshipped God night and day, prayed and fasted. She came in just at that moment. She gave thanks to God and spoke about this child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. Both Simeon and Anna recognized Jesus for who he is. The Savior. The consolation of Israel. They both understood the significance of this little baby born in a stable in a sleepy little town of Bethlehem. And they saw Jesus as a future ruler, one that would cause the rising and falling of others. They had spiritual insight, mental acuity, perspective, and a revelation from God through the Holy Spirit to see and recognize Jesus as King of kings and Lord of lords long before others did. And how rewarding for Simeon and Anna, who would now, up till now, could only dream of this day. The day of seeing and meeting the Christ child in person. What a comfort. And Simeon even says in verse 28, O Lord, Sovereign Lord, as you promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. His life calling was fulfilled. Even as an eight-day-old infant, Jesus was bringing peace to others. What Simeon and Anna saw in foresight by a revelation from God through His Spirit, we have the privilege of seeing in hindsight as we look back. How many of you know hindsight is 2020? You ever heard that? We can look back and now see what they saw. How so? We have the testimony of the entire Bible, of the Holy Scriptures to point us to Jesus, to point us to Bethlehem, to point us to who this Christ child really, really is. We may not have the spiritual keenness of Simeon or Anna. Not everyone has special insight from the Holy Spirit all the time. We may not possess the gift of discernment, but we are blessed with the entire testimony of Scripture, the Holy Bible. Looking back at the baby Jesus through the lens of the whole of Scripture, we too get a clear picture of who this Jesus is. What a blessing. What a privilege. More so than those who were present at his birth. We may not see it right away, but in hindsight, we too find ourselves celebrating the Christ. What does the Bible say about this Jesus born in Bethlehem? Here's just a few things. John 1, 1 tells us that he is the living word. He was with God in the beginning, and he was God. He is the word become flesh. Hebrews 1, the Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being. What does God look like? Look at Jesus, the exact representation of his being. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. John wrote in his gospel that Jesus is the, the bread of life, the true vine, the good shepherd, the gate for the sheep, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one who brings us abundant life. Revelation tells us that he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. He rules over all. And Revelation 22 reminds us that Jesus said that he is coming back. He is coming back to judge, to take his people home. All you have to do is read the Gospels, study the Bible, read the New Testament, and you will fall in love with Jesus, who is a friend of sinners, an encouragement to the outcast who forgives your sins, who lifts up the downtrodden, the hurting, the grieving, who casts out demons and heals the sick. And according to the angel birth announcement to the shepherds, Jesus is also our source of peace. 
Simeon could now depart this world in peace because he had met Jesus. I cannot think of anything needed more in today's world. You see wars, tragedies, atrocities, killing, brutality, murder. We see factions and divisions. We see arguments between Republicans and Democrats. People who are Chiefs fans and people who aren't Chiefs fans. <laughs> Fact is, this world is divided. We need peace. We need peace on earth. Goodwill to all people. Maybe it's peace in your own family that you need. Maybe there's tension. You're anxious about getting together this Christmas. Maybe there's peace among friends that is needed. There's tension there. Maybe there's been a falling out. Maybe it's peace at work that you need between you and your boss or you and coworkers. Maybe it's peace at school, walking through the halls without being bullied. Maybe it's peace in your own heart and soul. Peace between you and your maker. Instead of peace, sometimes we have problems. Instead of wonder, we have worry. Instead of joy at Christmas, you are a hot, jumbled mess. You are tired and weary and anxious and fearful and burnt out. You are concerned for the future of this world and of your life. Join the club. We are a broken world, a fallen people, which is why Jesus came into this world. To give you peace. To give us peace. Jesus said, I will give you rest. Those of you who are weary and heavy laden, burdened. He said, my peace I will give to you. Not peace like the world gives, which is fleeting. But I will give you an enduring, everlasting peace. Peace on earth. And so tonight, Jesus himself is pointing us to Bethlehem, to God through himself. The living word, the entire Bible, Jesus points us to the way, the truth, and the life. Not only through the foresight of Simeon and Anna, but also through our hindsight, looking back now on the manger some 2,000 years later, taking into account all of Scripture and looking into Jesus, into that manger scene through the lens of Scripture, we look back and we see the Christ child, a Savior that has been born to us, Christ the Lord. Praise God. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Would you come to the manger? Would you come to Bethlehem to find Jesus this Christmas? Whatever that means for you, maybe you need to take a break from all the busyness and commotion of presents and trees and decorations and lights and family get-togethers and foods and potlucks or whatever it is that you do and maybe you just need to say, you know what, I need a little time on my own and I'm just going to reflect and pray and thank God for the gift of Jesus and what he does for me. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a commitment to reading your Bible this new year, getting into the Word and looking back on the life of Jesus, starting the Gospel of Mark. We're going to resume that sermon series here in two weeks from this morning. We're going to dig in and look deeper at the life of Jesus. Come join us. Don't miss even one week. Yeah, the prophets have pointed us to him. 
The shepherds have shown us the way. Mary and Joseph lead us to Bethlehem. The wise men traveled afar to meet him. And tonight, Jesus shows us the way to Bethlehem. Do you see him? Do you see him for who he is? Would you receive him? Would you bow down like the wise men and worship him? May it be so. May it be so in all of our lives. Amen. Let's pray. God, may we find Jesus not merely in a manger this Christmas, but also in our hearts, in our lives, in our relationships, in our families, in our community, in our church, in our nation, in our world. Oh, how we need Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving him to us. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Fill our hearts. Make us right with you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. you to, to pray with me this prayer printed in your bulletin tonight a prayer for letting our light shine Lord Jesus we rejoice that in your love you came down to live among us and to save us you are the light of the world that dispels our darkness be born in us 
Let your light shine in us, and may we be your lights to the world. Amen. At this time, let us prayerfully and silently pass the flame of the light of Christ one to another.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Follow me. And you will never walk in darkness. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. <coughs> Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl or a bushel. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before people that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Amen. 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 This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may your light come and shine through our lives, through our hearts, in our words and our deeds and all that we do. May your light shine at Grace Church and, and in all of our churches. Lord, there is much darkness around us. The darkness often closes in. It would try to extinguish the flame. But Lord, we translate this flame even as we blow out these candles in a moment. We carry this flame with us in our hearts, in our lives, to a world and to a people in darkness. Light our hearts, Lord. Heal us. Make us whole. Make us new. Let us shine for Jesus. In his name we pray. <coughs> Amen. Amen. So before anyone moves, I'm just going to ask you to just puff out that flame. We don't want any accidents or fires here. Allow me to be among the first to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for your presence here. We will have a combined service on next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Ron Bartlett will be here to lead you. God bless you. Have a great Christmas season.